Okay, welcome everyone. Starting off Monday, we're going to get into the broad market indices, looking at the technicals on, on these charts. We're going to look at gold. I know a lot of people are interested in the gold trade and what's going on there. So we'll definitely do a deep dive into that and some of these miners pointing out key levels to watch. Uh, looking at some of these various short trade ideas that I've pointed out and we'll go ahead and wrap up there. So getting into the market right now, we're looking at tech this morning. Again, tech is the one area I'm really focused on, especially kind of those large cap tech names, looking for a trigger, a sell trigger on those. Now we don't have any sell trigger yet, as shown in the triple Qs, you can see that we're continuing to kind of grind around. We've got a shorter term trend line on the daily chart where we're just making kind of slightly higher highs, just barely grinding around sideways. However, we have negative divergence, you can see on the daily chart, we've got a new higher high in price right here with lower high in momentum. See there how we're dropping off on momentum? It keeps kind of going lower. That's negative divergence telling you that we're likely going to get a break of this trend and some sort of a big move to the downside. Also, you can see that volatility has really been compressing. If we look at the VIX, we can take a look at that. Uh, there it is. There's the VIX. And you can see we have bullish divergence in the VIX. Right in here, we basically have been making kind of new higher highs on the RSI, and the PPO has been doing that as well. If I get rid of this one, you can see basically right through here, we had we have bullish divergence. Grab the tool right there. So you see how the momentum is moving up, and yet price continues to drip, you know, kind of grind lower that's bullish divergence doesn't mean it has to play out bullish divergence is not a reason to go long anything and it's also you know it's just the same as bearish divergence not a reason to go short but it does give you an indication that the setup is there for a, you know a move to the upside so again we're i'm just watching the triple q's the tech sector for indication that we're going to start to get a broad based market sell-off it's in the charts we just need to see it actually play out going back to the cues here you've got the negative divergence we just need to see that bearish breakdown on the candle looking at some of these fang stocks google you can see over the last little while they've just been creating this really tight compression candles grinding along this trend line which goes all the way back to you know this is kind of the march 2020 lows bullish price channel that Google's been in and we broke above it right here with negative divergence that is a break above to new highs in price and yet much lower lows in the momentum see how that's just downtrending on the momentum uh, <clears throat> so that's a negative divergence and then you can see we're just barely holding on to this on the support really for about a week and a half we've been just grinding along there so I'm looking for some sort of a bearish break probably going to come in the form of a gap down I would think but we did we don't have it there so no reason to short yet and no reason to short across uh, the tech sector yet but we are waiting for signs that we're going to get that bearish break and looking for it in the candle same with apple look what apple's been doing on this daily chart i mean we've just flattened out and gone nowhere since pretty much the beginning of july um, almost a month we've just been chopping around sideways really going nowhere we have negative divergence on the RSI and the PPO. You can see how we're just dropping off here on the PPO and the RSI kind of made an equal high right there in momentum, but on a higher price. So that's still negative divergence. And we've gone nowhere ever since. So I think it's likely we're gonna break down, but again, we need to see a break and I'm really watching this near-term support level on the hourly chart for Apple. And it's sitting right there at about 144.50. Uh, until we break that, get some sort of a bullish breakdown candle. No reason to short. We'll just let it do its thing. Let you know, let it kind of grind out. But the momentum is telling me we're gonna get it. Well, you know, doesn't tell me when we're gonna get it. Just tells me it's gonna be you know relatively soon. And that the next 10% move. I best one way to think of negative divergence is the likelihood of the next 10% move being to the upside is less than the likelihood of the the next 10 percent move going to the downside so the risk reward ratio is is favored to the downside and that's why i'm more interested in looking for the opportunity to short up here than i am looking for an opportunity to add new money long and the s p 500 really no change just continues to kind of grind higher 
on really low volume and just really tight price comp compression. So I'm not really interested in looking at the S&P 500. I'm more looking at that those those market leading stocks, the FANG stocks, the tech sector for an indication of where the next move uh, is going to be. Big negative divergence has been building for a while, and these can build for a while. If you look at pat the past and the S&P 500, negative divergences can build for a few months, and then you get a swift move down, and it wipes out all the gains uh, very quickly. So I'm look that's what I'm looking for is to capture not so much be long and just capture the grinding move to the upside, but really looking to capture the swift move to the downside. Uh, it's they call it picking up nickels in front of a steamroller. So if you're long this market, you're gaining, you're picking up nickels, but that steamroller is right there, right in front of you. And I'm really not interested in stepping in front of that. So, yep, you'll be right until you're wrong, I guess, if you're long in this market. But uh, the negative divergence tells me we're going to get that move. And I'm just continuation of that story until I see a change in the technical posture. And small caps kind of tells that story that we're, the market's not going up anymore. And that's why it's gr the large caps are just grinding higher because those FANG stocks are just trickling in here and there. But the IWM is 2,000 stocks, the Russell 2000. And you can see it's pretty much flattened out for, you know, since February, basically, it's gone nowhere. So until we see an indication of break one way or the other of the range, either to the upside or to the downside, you know, then we're we're just kind of flat and we need to wait for a decision to be made in this market. The negative divergence that's in place right now on the IWM tells me that you're likely gonna break to the downside. We are correcting, uh, it's in time as of right now, the correction is just kind of going nowhere, correction in time. The negative divergence is dropping, so it tells me we're gonna get that break to the downside but again, we could just be correcting in time and then we'll you know, make a move to the upside and take out the divergences. That's completely possible. But until we see that showing up in the charts, uh, I have to anticipate you know, a downside move. Okay, let's get to gold. So a couple things we have going on in gold, all right? One thing is we have this uptrend line from the, really back here in 2019, but the, here's the COVID lows. Here's a couple tags of that trend line. And we've broken that trend line now. It's right here. We've had a pretty impulsive break. Uh, and so that in, sh in the short term is definitely a sell signal. Uh, we also have major support down here at 1680. So you can see that that was basically the former area of support all through here. It was also resistance right through here. I've got it marked in blue right here. And then back here in the March 21, uh, we hit that and held support as well. And this morning, before the market opened, they you know they dropped gold within a few minutes, right down to that support level, and that's where the buyers were at. Step, they stepped in and bought it. So that's major support. Any price, you know, prices lower than that. If we break below that, we've got something structurally uh, wrong with gold at that point. So we'll want to look at that. We are holding that level. We also had a level of support right here at 1750 kind of a shorter term level because we had chopped through it a couple times. So it was more of a shorter term level, but we, we've sliced through that. So at this point, the range that I'm really interested in is looking at resistance up here at 17, uh, you know, but that 1750 and support down here at about 1680. All right, that's your level to watch. Structurally, I'm still bullish on gold and I wanna point out some of the reasons why. A couple things. Look at the PPO right here on gold bullion. We made a new lower low in price and yet still have bullish divergence. So you can see there how the momentum is trending up. Now the PPO is pointed down, but it's still a higher level than the previous low and we have much lower price. So that is a divergent low. The drop today was a divergent low right down to major support. When you have bullish divergence coming into major support, that's the area that you typically want to be buying at. And so far that's held bullish. So, okay, so that bullish divergence exists on gold. Let's look at some of these miners. Here's one, Agnico Eagle. You can see we dropped back down to this support level right down here. Uh, we're not quite there. We could go a little lower, but right in the area. And it's a new low in price. And yet the momentum, as I zoom in, you can see, still has bullish divergence. Here's the RSI. 
there, bullish divergence, and we're falling to support. So again, this is the area that you want to be buying at. You know, nothing says when you're buying something bullish divergent or at support that it's going to go straight up right away. But along this support line is the buy zone on this stock. And so coming down here, you know, we could go a little lower, but still keep that bullish divergence. Tells me that we're likely nearing the end of uh, this down move and we're going to move up. But until we see something different in the charts, that's how I'm treating it. Still bullish on this one. Okay, Barrick Gold. The thing I want to point out. So on Barrick, we're making a new low today, just barely, and kind of a marginal new low. And yet, if you see the momentum here, I drill into the PPO, bullish divergence. We're making a higher low in the momentum. So we still have upward moving momentum with downward moving price. That's bullish divergence. Here's the RSI. You can see here, now we are pointed down in the RSI, but still a higher low in the momentum and price is a lower low. So price is diverging from momentum. Momentum is a leading indicator telling you that very there's a high probability that price will start to follow momentum. So I'm looking for you know this as an area to add to positions as we continue to hit support on this daily downtrend line with bullish divergence looking for that move up. So what we've seen in the miners, I think, in the short term is kind of a flush out move, but it still has kept the bullish divergence across a lot of these different miners. HMY, you can see here, bullish divergence. Right here we have, let me get rid of that. You can see we have upward moving momentum. Now, it is pointed down, so you want to see it confirm. You want to see a bounce up like that to help confirm that. But we still have a lower low in price right here and higher low in momentum on the PPO as well. So there's the PPO. Doesn't mean that we can't take out that bullish divergence by the momentum dropping off and heading downward. But as of right now, it is bullish divergence. So watch for confirmation of the divergence. And I'm, I think that we're likely gonna see kind of a, a bottoming you know, pattern or bottoming range in these miners. And Newmont mining, Newmont Mining, you can see, has this downtrend line right here. We broke out above that downtrend. There's a breakout candle. Came in for a back test, back test again. We're back testing again today. This back test right here today is with bullish divergence. See the momentum, how we're moving higher? So a higher low right there, although the price is a lower low. So momentum is moving, trending higher, making higher highs and higher lows while price is continuing to make lower lows and lower highs. That's divergence, that's momentum diverging from price, indicating that you're likely gonna see price start to uh, you know, move in the direction of momentum in the near future. Again, momentum is a leading indicator uh, of price. So if you just follow price, you just see a downtrend. If you're following momentum, you're seeing an uptrend. Watch for the, moment, for the price to start to turn in the direction of the momentum. That's what divergence does. It helps you get a jump start as a leading indicator on where price is likely to head in the future. Nothing's guaranteed, but we are at support right here on Newmont, right around this $59 range with bullish divergence. So this is an area to potentially buy. Now, if you break below and start to close down here, that's no good. You know, that would be kind of a you know, that would be a sell signal basically if you break below the support. So watch for that. But as of right now, we're at support with bullish divergence. I mean, that's as about as good as it gets when it comes to uh, looking for an area to potentially add to a trade. Uh, you want to buy at support and sell at resistance. That's how it works. Okay, guys, sorry, I had to take a quick call. Um, so Newmont is at support. And you can see here this downtrend line on the daily chart. We've held this trend line for a while, so we're just testing it again today uh, with bullish divergence that remains intact. So it doesn't mean that we're gonna hold this trend line and it doesn't mean this bullish divergence is you know gonna remain, but it's there right now and we're at support. That's the best you can do. So this is, a, this is kind of an objective area to add to a trade or establish a new one, in my opinion. Again, everything on the channel is just my opinion. Okay, and some of these short ideas, there's a lot that haven't changed, but here's ANF Abercrombie. We had a sell signal right here when we broke support, 37.12 as support, and you can see we're just back testing that support. So again, this is a sell the rip 
uh, chart where you'd want to short or exit along into resistance for an anticipation that we move down to the next level of support, which is at 3038. I don't see any indication that that is not the case. That's that's not going to happen. So I'm looking for more downside. Uh, again, we're just testing resistance and nothing's technically changed. Here's MGM. Again, resistance is sitting there right at about 3970. And you can see today they're just still below resistance. So this is just, you know, we basically have been moving down, chopping, consolidating for the last little while. And we are not back above resistance. We don't have any, any indication that we're going to uh, continue, not going to continue the downtrend. So you'll see here, even on the momentum, we have slightly higher momentum recently, but we also had higher prices. So there's no divergence. Tells me we're likely going to have another leg down uh, to this 34. And, you know, that's all I see in the chart as of right now. Starbucks kind of flagging out right here. It's a bear flag is what this is. So you have a move, you're kind of flagging out, and then you continue to move. So we're just looking for continuation of that move after we break down from this consolidation area. I'd look for the recent lows right here. You can see we're just holding that level. 117.60 uh, is the area. A break below that, we should continue the move to the downside. And I'm looking for a move down to 109.40 as the next level of kind of major support. You also have these former lows that could act as a minor level right here, but it's a much better level of support down here at 109.40, 109.50 area. And oil is dropping today. So oil to me looks like it's really started a new downtrend. You can see here on CL, we've got this uptrend line right here. We have negative, this is oil futures. We've got negative divergence up near the high. So you'll see here, momentum is making a lower high and yet price made a new higher high than the former high right there. Okay, and it's, that's on the RSI as well. We broke trend and we're kind of continuing to the downtrend. The way I'm playing this is with this drip one. This is a two times leveraged bear fund. Uh, so when oil falls, this thing goes up. It's up slightly today, but basically to me, it looks like it's just kind of consolidating. So we move up, flag out, and then we move up to the next level 14. That's really my final target on this. Still looks good. Again, we had bullish divergence down here. You see the momentum starting to move up right there while price was continuing to grind lower. This is what gold looks like. Gold looks like it's kind of down in this range right here. Kind of this consolidation, grinding lower, making lower prices while momentum's moving higher. And then we're looking for a break higher. And then we got the breakout, consolidate, and it looks like we're heading up to the next level. Um, <clears throat> so, that's really all I've got, guys. I thank you. If you follow along and you find value, leave me a thumbs up. Check out my stock market technical analysis course. Link in the description below. And I will catch you guys on the next video.